for the next background, we're gonna look at how we can make um, some trees or make it look like you're in a forest. So basically this looks really, really challenging, but all you really need to think about is that we're making shapes of color. Okay, so for most of our tree trunks, we're just doing vertical rectangles. We have maybe a little more of a triangular shape at the bottom, um, but we're just doing those um, shapes of color and then we're getting smaller as they go behind. And then we're doing like blobs of different kinds of greens up there at the top and down here at the bottom for some grasses. So I don't want you to think that this is too hard for you because we're not drawing any of the characters right now and those are the trickiest parts. So we're gonna take a look at how we can make some trees using watercolor paints. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a wet paintbrush and I'm gonna wake up my paint because it's really important that we wake up our paints before we start using them. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let a drip of water go onto my paints to wake them up because they're very sleepy right now, sitting there dry, okay? So I'm gonna take a little bit of brown I'm either gonna wipe a little bit of water off my brush, okay? And I'm just gonna start somewhere on my paper, doesn't really matter where, and I'm basically gonna make a long rectangle going up to the top. And some areas of my tree bark are gonna be dark, some areas are gonna be light, okay? So we're not making the typical tree that has all those Y shapes. We're just kind of making a tree um, that has the branches very up high in the air, so we can't really see many of them. Okay, so I'm just making a rectangle shape, but I have shadows in this rectangle shape. Some areas are darker, some areas are lighter. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and maybe I'll bring the bottom out more like a triangle like it showed in the book. And I have my first tree done. And I have some shadows, I have some light areas, I have some dark areas. And that's gonna help my picture look more real, like a real tree. I have some shadows, and I have some light. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna keep making rectangles and they're gonna be in different places. Some are gonna be bigger, some are gonna be smaller. And then I'm gonna add some in behind. But I'm gonna do the ones in the foreground first, the ones closest to me are gonna be the biggest. So I'm gonna do those first. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to think about when you're making your trees is that some of the trees you're gonna see the bottom of, some of them you won't, and some of them you might have more space on the ground because those trees are farther away. If you think about it, when you look at things that are close to you, you can't really see the space between you and them very much. If I'm looking at a person who's standing very close to me, I might not see the ground at all. But if I'm looking at a person who's farther away, I'm gonna see the ground in front of their feet. Okay, so for this tree, I'm starting up higher on my piece of paper because that tree is gonna be a little bit farther away from me. Now that my foreground trees are finished, what I can do is I can take the water off of my brush. I'm just gonna pinch it and push it off there with my finger, or if you have a napkin or something, you can dry your brush off a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly dry, but um, a little bit more dry. And I'm just gonna try to get a lot of paint and not a lot of water on my brush. Then what I'm gonna go in and do is add a few details on my tree bark. So I'm gonna add some more shadows. I'm just gently rubbing over the top of my tree. I'm doing long brush strokes up and down because my trees grow up. I'm just gently going over my trees. Now, if you don't like how this looks, do you have to do it? No, you are the artist. This technique though is called using a dried brush and it'll really add a lot of texture to your trees. But you might look at this and you might say, no, I love the tr my trees just the way they are. So I don't wanna make them have any more texture on them and that is okay. So I'm just adding a little bit, and some have, I might have more than others, and that's okay. If my brush is getting too dry, I can do the same thing, add a little water, but then pinch it to dry it off, and put a little bit in. And that was kind of a lot, so I might go over that one a little bit and blend it in. 
but this is very close tree to me, so it may be okay that the color is really bright. There, so I have some of my trees and I have some nice bark on them. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add the trees that are behind. They are in the middle ground. They're not super far away like the ones I can barely see, um, but they are closer in about the middle of the paper there. So how many trees you add completely depends on your story, um, the setting in your story that you're trying to tell. Um, so if you wanna add more trees in this, you definitely can. If you want less, that's okay too. Maybe you're just making a few trees because it's somebody's yard, you're not really in a forest. But the most important part is, is that in the beginning here in the foreground trees, you went back and added some details to really make some nice shadows. But the trees that are really far away, I just went in and I just hardly touched them without a whole lot of paint, mostly water on my brush, and I just kind of made a quick line because these trees are really far away. I'm not gonna see them very well, so it's okay if they kind of just look like a brown line. That's all right. You're hardly gonna know what's back there. I'm making this one a little bit bigger because I didn't like how it looked. But for some of these, I just did a simple brown line because they're so far away, they're hard to see. Now I'm gonna let my paper dry for a little while, um, just maybe a few minutes, um, so that I don't mix my brown and my green when I come back to adding the green. But maybe yours is in the snow, so maybe you're not adding any green, maybe you're done. Um, or maybe you want to add some fall colors because maybe you have leaves scattered all over the ground. So the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to add in some green. Again, if yours is in the winter time and this is covered with snow, you could be fine with this. Or maybe you want to even dip your finger in some, some dark paint. Um, you could make some footprints going through here, like a little trail. Um, or you can just be done if you want to use brighter colors, like your warm colors, your yellows, your reds, your oranges. You could do this to make autumn leaves on the ground. So your setting can tell not only where you are, but maybe what type of, what kind of, um, excuse me, what season it is. So I'm going to put a little green on my brush, wipe off some of the water, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to add some green on the ground. So my trees are dry, so my paint shouldn't be mixing a whole lot. And I'm kind of just dabbing my paper really quickly. I'm not really using brush strokes like I did with my trees. One of the reasons, or with my, yeah, with my tree bark, one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because I wanna make sure that there's shadows on the ground. And since grass, and, and leaves and things that would be on the forest floor aren't really growing vertically and tall like a tree are. If it's a blade of grass, it would be growing vertically, but it's very short. So I'm just kind of dabbing here and I'm leaving some spots darker um, so that I have some shadows and some texture, especially here in the front of my picture. I'm also gonna come in with a few extra um, other colors that I might layer in too. And um, as I get farther away, then a lot of this um, texture that I'm adding is gonna kind of disappear. So I might be actually painting with strokes in between my trees as I get farther away. And then maybe just coming in with my brush and adding some little dots like that or something to add a little bit of texture. But I don't wanna add too much where it's far away because that's the kind of thing that I wouldn't really be able to see much because it's farther away from me. Okay. So I'm just kind of going and working the color in. And then once I have this down a little bit, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna add um, some darker colors. I probably don't wanna use black. I might wanna add a little bit of brown to my brush, just in certain areas to create some shadows. If I use some black, it's probably gonna be too dark and it's not gonna look as real. 
but if I use some dark brown to make some shadows, it's gonna look more like a real forest floor because if you really pay attention, most of the time shadows aren't black. They're just a really dark color. So you wanna think about where your shadows might be and add some of those in to create some texture and some shadows. I just wanted to show you something quick that happened to me. I added my brown in here, but I added too much. So all I'm doing is I'm taking some of that brown and I'm spreading it out in other areas of my picture. I don't have to get upset. I didn't ruin my artwork. Everything's going to be fine. I just need to move it. I need to put it in a different spot where I do want it to be. And if that doesn't work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tissue or a washcloth and I'm just going to touch right on top of that to pick up some of the color. And it's gonna come off. And if I still don't like it, I can always wait until it's dry and I can paint right over the top. But I don't mind that at all. It kinda looks like a shadow or maybe it's like a muddy area right there in my picture. And that is okay. Also, if yours doesn't look like mine, that's great. I don't want it to, okay? You are the artist, this is your picture, not mine. It should not look exactly like mine, okay? You are the artist, everyone's art should look different. Okay, so there I have my forest. Um, I can see that it's a really big forest. I can't even see the sky through it, and I like that. That's a good setting for my characters. I can keep playing with this or I could just feel like I'm done and I can put it away and be finished with it. It is up to you how far you take your art. You can always come back to it at another time and that's okay too. Watercolor is very nice in that way that you can keep playing with it or you can leave it alone and come back later. 